Hello everyone, my name is Frank and welcome back to the channel. Today, exciting video, we're talking about the brand new iPhone 13 Pro and we've got the brand new Sierra Blue color. It's been about a week since the release and I've been trying all the new features out and I'm liking it so far. So today I'm going to share with you some of my initial thoughts after about a week of initial usage. This is the new color. It is a lot lighter than the blue on the Pros last year. In different lighting to me, it changes from a bluish gray to a pastel desaturated icy snow mountain blue. <laughs> I know that's quite a long description, but it is different in terms of it's no longer following the darker color theme pattern on the Pros. It's taking a more calming approach. I do like it. I really like how refreshing it looks. I've been a fan so far. Let's start with the box. The box itself, since it no longer includes the power brick in the box beginning last year, it is very slim. If you are coming from a two year or more upgrade cycle, make sure you remember to pick up a USB charging brick uh, when you bring your new phone home. In the box, we have the trusty USB-C to a lightning cable, as well as some paperwork. The first thing I noticed was the gigantic new cameras. This year all three of the cameras got pretty significant upgrades and we will certainly be talking about them later in the video. When you pick up the phone, it does feel heavier. This year there are new bigger batteries which contributed to a lot of the weight increase of the pros and at the same time if you are coming from a phone that's more than two years, pay attention to the corners. The design is matching the current iPad Pro line Ups, they are using the sharper edges around the corners. It's no longer a more the rounded corner design. It looks slick. It looks very slick. I really like it, but it does feel different when you're holding it in your hand. It does take a little bit of a getting used to. On the front, as you can see, we have this year a smaller notch. It is still there, but now you have a little bit more room on the either side. The speaker is moved all the way to the top of the phone this year to provide more room for the front camera module. The room you gain on both sides of the notches are still in the decision power of all the great developers to see how they are going to utilize them. So far, it has not changed much, but still, the notch is still there. And when we talk about the front, we have to talk about the new screen. This year, the pros are finally getting the 120 hertz refresh rates. And I know this is not new, but Apple did a good job integrating the technology to take the most advantage of the screen and be efficient. The screen itself can change from 10 hertz to 120 hertz and adapts to the movement and or the content that's shown on the screen. As needed, if there's scrolling, for example, the screen itself will refresh faster to create a smoother transition. If there's not a lot of movement, the screen can reduce to 10 hertz refresh rate. That means that when you need the performance, it is there and it will also try to find opportunities to be more efficient. And this year, the peak screen brightness has also gone up. So when you are viewing HDR content or if you're just simply using it outdoors, they become much more clear to see and a little bit easier on your eyes. I know this 120 hertz refresh rate is not groundbreaking or news in the world of mobile phones and it has existed on iPad Pros for a while now. I've been okay actually with the screen that's on the existing iPhones and I've always treated this as one of those nice to have features but not have to have features on a phone. But also at the same time, this is one of those little things <laughs> that when you see it, when you get used to it, you cannot unsee it. Everything is so smooth. The text stays sharp when I'm scrolling. Images do not get blurry when I'm scrolling back and forth. And as I was testing and comparing the newer features of the phones, especially with the current existing 12 lineup, this became increasingly obvious. And certainly having that smooth and sharp refresh rates is a welcoming change. And now that I have it, it is getting really, really difficult 
to go without it. All right, next, let's talk about the cameras. The cameras are the most exciting upgrade that I've been looking for this year, and I'd like to share with you some of my initial thoughts. As a self-pronounced photographer, I toggle between my DSLR and phones for day-to-day -day use. And over the past few years, I noticed that more and more of the photos that I share are from my phones. So the quality of this camera have gotten so incredibly good with both the hardware enhancements and software improvements, and there's simply no match for the portability and convenience of just having a handheld device like this. Take the phone out of your pocket, aim, and you've got a great looking photo. I am putting together a longer video just about the photography and videography capabilities of the new iPhone this year, so make sure to subscribe to the channel and keep an eye out for that release. Here, I'm going to share with you some initial thoughts of the new cameras on the iPhone 13 Pros where all three of the lenses got their own upgrades. On the main camera, there's the bigger aperture, allowing in more light essentially to enhance the performance in everyday capture and as well as in lower light settings. It allows a quicker capture to eliminate the unsteadiness or the shakiness a lot of us have when we're using our phones. It creates a cleaner and sharper image. The ultrawide has also gotten an interesting upgrade this year, you get the ability to take macro shots with this lens and it automatically switches to the ultra wide as the phone gets closer to the object. I really think that's a very convenient feature. The photos are very sharp and it opens a whole new world of photographic possibilities. But also at the same time, the switching between the regular and the macro lens seems to be an automatic thing that's controlled by the phone. I do wish there is a switch uh, that I can have a little bit of a manual control just so that when you are kind of on the border between the two options, you have a better control to choose which effect you want to go for, but still convenient nonetheless. Telephoto lens this year has also been modified, changing from 2x or 2.5x zoom to the 3x zoom. To me, it is a change of perspective. It is really difficult to say whether this is better or worse. I know a lot of my photographer friends do love taking portraits with similar range lenses so that they can take advantage of that compression effect and the beautiful blur background. On a phone, it just, like I said, a change of perspective. During day-to-day -day use, having an optical zoom farther does give you the ability to see farther away, but also at the same time, if you are in a cramped environment and you can't really back up any further, having that longer lens can be a little challenging. But you could always go back to the 2x zoom uh, digitally from the main lens on the app. All of these improvements and enhanced on hardware are further strengthened with the A15 Bionic chip. Better processing powers enables a new generation of smart HDR capabilities where it used to require, at least for me, a tripod, multiple shots on the camera, and some post-editing to put all of these shots together to reach a similar effect. Now all that power is just in the palm of your hands. During my test of the cameras this past few days, I have been wowed honestly quite a few times when I was checking the end result of the shots, and they truly have impressed me quite a bit. Of course, we have to talk about the cinematic mode. This is also extremely cool to me that a phone, a phone can do this, and it is done all by the processing power of the processor, the A15 Bionic. It also records the depth info at the same time to enable post-editing and changing of the focus, which blew my mind. Effects like this used to require expensive hardware and a lot, a lot of work now on a phone. I, <laughs> I know I've said this many times in this video already, you can do this on your phone and the quality is actually quite good. Although I feel I still need some more time with the phone to truly experience it 
in every different scenario to truly give you a better feedback. At the moment, on the phone that I was testing, similar to the portrait mode on a shot, sometimes the phone will have a little bit of a difficulty detecting the finer edges like hair or smaller things. It could be lighting, it could be me because I'm shaking too much because of the excitement. I don't know, but I do like to try it out longer to provide you with an updated feedback. It is a tool, right? It matters is how we utilize it. From the effect that it has been able to achieve, I am more than happy with the result. I will be sharing my conclusions with you in an upcoming video, so be sure to subscribe to the channel to watch that upcoming release. Alright, I'm going to wrap up this video here. As you may have noticed, I did not mention about the performance of the A15 other than the new HDR in photos or the availability for cinematic mode that enabled. The phone has been running stellar on every task that I throw at it and I really do not have any concerns for it to be able to handle my day-to-day -day life. And throughout my heavier than usual first few days of usage, um, the battery life has helped out pretty well. I will continue to test these phones and provide with you with <laughs> more feedback as time goes by. So be sure to subscribe to the channel. Thank you again for spending your time with me talking about the new phones. I had a great time. Be sure to come back to the channel for more reviews and I will see you next time.